Hey, how's it going, Matt? And it's going Matt, great. Okay. It's going great. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, we're going to be takes, very confused uh, today when you use our name, Matt. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll call you Matt One and Two. I'm not That's sure which right. one that refers yeah. to. Um, the Mats. The Mats yes. Mats. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're here today to talk about the uh, 2023 uh, Mad uh, Landscape with uh, Matt Turk. Uh, so, awesome. Um, yeah, to kick things off, I guess congratulations for finally getting this thing out. I, I, uh, I, I think your normal cadence is uh, usually in September or thereabouts. Yeah, uh, yeah. So like th this year is like the big reset where um, you know it, the, the, initially this uh, was sort of like in the spring and then like bit by bit being busy over the years that started like becoming more like a fall cadence. So now we sort of like declared bankruptcy on 2022. Uh, we so we released a 2021 map mad in uh, September October of uh, 2021, and then we sort of like reset to like the early you know or at the beginning of the year, which sort of makes more sense uh, for you know for the obvious reasons. So here we are. Here uh, we are. You know, going forward, uh, like January or February is going to be the, the target release date for the map. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I guess a lot happened in the in the last uh, year year and a half too, from the 2021 index to today. Um, what, what were some of the big changes that you saw? Uh, you know, uh, the uh, environment changed a little bit. You know, <laughs> yeah, not, not too much, but you know. So, like, it's it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a pretty uh, drastically different world, and I think all of us uh, in the startup and venture ecosystem are still in the early phases of uh, adapting to it. And uh, certainly, the the mad world was. Uh, uh, affected by all of this and specifically data infrastructure and we can talk about this uh, you know meanwhile obviously uh, in AI it's like a whole different story around generative AI and how uh, you know frothy things um, you know became overnight so it's a little bit of a, like a tale of two worlds depending on how you how you look but certainly in the world of data infrastructure it's uh, you know the beginning of a digestion phase and again like i'm happy to get into the details meanwhile you know AI, yeah, it's like party like it's 1999 right <laughs> do, do you think we're seeing an era of let's use the greenspan phrase irrational exuberance around ai what are your thoughts on it like right now <laughs> yeah look so it's 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 this weird combination of like uh it's an extreme amount of hype uh but at the same time it's super exciting uh, you know, as opposed to like other shifts in technology where there was like tremendous of a amount of life, but it was sort of unclear what the thing was for, or it felt very, um, you know, too early to get truly excited. Uh, this phase of AI is both super IP, but it's really, uh, you know, clearly uh, amazing stuff. So no, look, the, the, the hype is, is what it is. I've been right. uh, in the AI you know, did I now work for, like, for a number of years now? And I've been at Firstmark uh, for 10 years. And just during my time at Firstmark, it's basically the third hype cycle for AI, right? Mm -hmm. There was one, you know, after 2012, uh, deep learning, image net, all the things. So like call it 2013, 2014, 2015, uh, where, uh, you know, AI was like super excited, exciting. Like everybody was like writing the blog post about AI and like everybody's like tweeting about AI, you know, and that sort of like died down a little bit. Then there was a second hype cycle somewhere around, you know, 2015, 2016, and that was mostly chatbots. Um, and like people got excited about chatbots and like hated it and loved them and hated them, like all within a few months. And it was kind of funny. And then that went away. And like, as we all know, like crypto and web three became the thing that everybody was you know, excited about. Everybody was changing their LinkedIn profiles with like crypto advisor, crypto thought leader, you know. And then that went like the way we know. And um, now like AI is coming back for, you know, in my time at First Market, it's third. Uh, hype cycle. So, look, in, in, in some ways it's it's funny, in some ways it's annoying, but like in some ways it, uh, it's sort of like deja vu and, you know, it's it's part of the nature of this industry uh, to go through those moments of excitement and then things need to be cooled down and then they pick back up. How is this hype cycle the same and how is it different? I mean, what, what are you noticing about it versus the last two? So the, the big difference uh, for the generative AI hype cycle this time around is that it's a, a mainstream kind of hype cycle. So in 2012, 13, 14, you know, deep learning, like people were trying to wrap their minds around what that meant and what that could lead to. Uh, and uh, 20, again, 15, 16, 17 chatbots, it felt like it was a little bit of a sort of a single trick pony kind of 
um, you know, I have cycles like, okay, well, we're sort of getting a sense, you know, and it was chatbots, but it was also like kind of like Siri, Alexa, like all those things, right? And um, and uh, so what's happening now is that um, uh, with generative AI, suddenly have this thing that uh, a couple of things. So, like one, it it does multiple things. So, you know, we've 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 had AI in our lives um, a lot more than we realize, right? Like mm-hmm. our, our our phone uh, unlock, you know, unlocking uh, the phone with our face. That's AI. Uh, you know, a lot of like Google Maps is AI. Um, you know, you get a, one of those annoying calls from your bank uh, about potential fraud. That's AI, right? That's AI. Like, but like, all of this for like single trick ponies. Uh, you know, very impressive what they do, but. You know, and with, and with Chat GPT, I think uh, there was a, a similarly a, 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 this this um, uh, almost like talking to like uh, this um, uh, all-encompassing uh, general intelligence, right? That's sort of the experience where like, you interact with something that seems to know everything uh, in multiple languages and can do math and can do. Uh, science and can write and like and, and all the things so 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 going from single trick pony to like general purpose kind of experience one and then two um i think the, the broad public and i'm uh, you know just like just anyone could could interact with with that ai in a way that they could relate to so that ai could uh, create text like we can create text they can can do math like we can do math it can create like beautiful images like talking about stable diffusion and mid journey and um, and dolly and all the things so so anyone can relate to this new phase of ai so basically long-winded way of saying um you know i think i think there's something very um, uh, exciting that's something with generative ai at the same time i think i think what's what's really happening now the reason why it's so hypey is that it's it's accessible by everyone so yep. it's really that moment when ai has become mainstream yeah, it's really interesting because it, it felt like in the general data world, which, which we'll get back to when we talk about the landscape, but it felt like um, I would say through mid-2022, I was kind of, I was starting to kind of write off the, the latest wave of, um, I guess, more pedestrian use cases of uh, machine learning and AI. And then all of a sudden, chat GPT comes out and I'm like, never mind. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it just sort of sucked all the oxygen yeah. out of the room, right? So... Well, it was uh, Chat GPT is really when uh, you know, like all uh, you know, hell broke loose kind of kind of thing. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, for people following the space uh, reasonably closely, it was like sort of insane in twenty twenty two, right? Like it's There's like every, on, actually. yeah, mm-hmm. almost like every day there was like there was there was something, right? So there was uh, you know, stable diffusion and Dolly two, and then Meta Cicero, and like you know, like CSM coming. out was like their three D world creation. It's like just like oh, like every day almost so there was there was something and no it was as all things right like nothing is ever an overnight success but mm-hmm. it was many years uh, in the making so mm-hmm. going back i mean certainly to deep learning and gans um uh, but also very much to the transformer architecture right which uh, came out in 2017 so that's really yeah. that journey from 2017 to 2022 where where things were sort of like you know interesting to anyone that was in the in the field but then starting to like yeah. reach that uh, kind of uh, exponential acceleration uh, and that that exponential aspect is what we're getting everybody like so hyped up for sure yeah it's kind of like the iphone moment in a lot of ways it felt like yeah so, that's yeah. a good way to put it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's the world before and the world after and it changed a lot of things so well and yeah. i think the other parallel is that you had smartphones between before the iphone but the iphone was the one that really captured the public consciousness like all of a sudden this was something that people wanted to run out and buy it wasn't just some obscure really expensive nokia phone model that sat on the shelf basically mm-hmm. yeah that, that, that's exactly right that's exactly right there's like both uh, like a next generation disruptive super impressive mm-hmm. from a technology standpoint thing but also just broad adoption from mm-hmm. a, almost like an emotional uh perspective from like for, for like you know millions of people around the world so i think that's yeah. exactly right um kind of bring it back to the index real quick let's uh let me just share my screen real quick i will uh, i have an extra large monitor to fit this thing on because uh <laughs> um, I, I don't have the james webb telescope to hone in on this unfortunately so uh, yeah to but do. you did see hopefully you, you you saw the you saw the interactive version oh of yes the, on the, the world wide web version yes so this is the, uh, this no. is the uh, PDF version if you uh, if you are into PDFs um, yeah but that, that's, thing, that, but that that's, was let's forget about that right this is the more modern version here um, so. yeah well I think that's that's a big thing of this year right like this all uh, you know VCs uh, embracing the internet as a disruptive technology 
it's you crazy from like a paper to electronic <laughs> you know i think i think this whole internet thing has legs like i think i, I might have to print this out though just to make sure i, I don't really trust the web yet so yeah um, it's, it's yeah, my dad just, used to do he's just, just my daddy don't give it your off. credit yeah. card information most, most importantly. It's, it's uh yeah 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 the first mark will be buying a lot of pizzas on your dime for every <laughs> yes, uh, yes. data driven nyc i think Okay. Hey, it's it's living. Cool. So you can click in, uh, you know, um, you, you got all the uh, kind of usual. Yeah, you should have a like, car that comes up on the bottom right, which was like yeah. uh, with uh, yeah. some data from our friends at yeah. uh, CB Insights. So, I mean, so there's 1,400 logos on here. I, I think back in the day when you first started this, it was like, what, 130 something, 140? Yeah, uh, like 139 for the first 139. time. 139, that's right, yeah. So, I mean, walk us through this process of like, how do you make this thing? Uh, what What's... So uh, how I make it is 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 uh, very closely related to like why I make it, uh, and why I make it is um, largely ultimate initially for my own benefit. Um, mm. So the work is the goal. Uh, the work is not the means. The work is the goal. It's the forcing function of um, having to do this thing every year, which is like self-imposed. Uh, but that forces me, you know, as a VC, like I'm like everybody else, like I run around, I go from like meeting to meeting uh, and, um, you know, the world keeps happening and I, I don't have really the time to just like read every day, you know, blog posts and tweets and speak to people and all the things. So that forces me every year to just um, uh, stop whatever I do or somehow have found hours on top of what I do to uh, do this kind of like labor of love thing. So the, the work is the goal. And then the, the, the reason why I publish it, uh, look, I mean, it's nice, uh, to, you know, to the, from a content marketing perspective, like all the things, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, but I, I, I publish it, uh, it's very much an open source kind of philosophy. And it's, uh, you know, putting out in the world and uh, I care immensely about what I get back and all the comments and all the conversations and it like, enables me to have this conversation right now mm -hmm. uh and plus like with you know the people online um and 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 that's you know so um how i do it is is through a tremendous amount of, <laughs> of research and like work and um in addition to all my you know day job as a vc where like i'm very right. specialized in that uh, general area and you know build by a bit like you just like iterate and iterate and iterate and then you put it out in the world and then you get like a bunch of feedback which is happening right now and right now we're like uh, compiling a lot of the comments and we're going to release another version of it mm. uh and that's that's sort of a it works so it's it's meant to be uh, a community driven uh conversation around uh it's not just me and whoever is working on this um you know my colleague kevin and katie at, at, at first market have been helping me with this uh but it's it's uh, it's meant to be like something that we arrive at some version of the truth as a community right this leads me to another question i was thinking about earlier um how do you respond when someone says how could you not include company X and you talk about in your documents about being opinionated, I think in part one, uh, how do you respond to that <laughs> typically? You know, it's, 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 uh, so first of all, there's a lot of that and um, you know, some of it is more or less pressing and some of it is more or less in, in, indignant in, um, in tone. And so, you know, you do the, the best you can um this like okay is my company in there or not is my company in the right category and there's a lot of you know my company should be in 27 different boxes even though we are a seed stage company right and um you know based on what we may or may not have today and what we certainly don't have but that's on our roadmap and like so there's a lot of those conversations mm. and i'm saying this with love right because again this is meant to be um, a conversation with a community so look we 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 do the best we can this um, as you were saying joe this uh, you know 1400 plus uh, companies on this uh, chart we could easily fit another 1400 uh, and uh, like at some point we have to make a cutoff and like this year we um, have uh, as you were saying Matt like something more opinionated and um, uh, we decided uh, in particular and like if anybody's interested in the methodology like in the post that's like you know a number of uh, bullet points that explain sort of how we go about it. Uh, but this year we, we decided to um, let in a lot of very early stage companies. Whereas in prior years, uh, we looked at um, companies in terms of uh, uh, amount fund raise, which is a very imperfect metric, but like gives you a sense of like how long um, the company's been around and like, you know, like what kind of like uh, sort of 
uh, financial power they have. Then we looked at revenue whenever we had access to it. And then, you know, uh, this year we uh, deliberately included a lot of companies that were super early, especially in the right side of the landscape, which has tons of generative AI companies. So we, we wanted to, uh, so, you know, this infrastructure on the left, analytics, uh, machine learning, and then on the right side, you have applications. So we added this whole, whole section here that says application horizontal. Uh, which is basically a bunch of generative oh, AI yeah. companies. And look, a lot of these companies did not exist uh, you know, six months ago, but uh, <laughs> it's such a big deal, generative AI, that we want to make sure that we captured that evolution. And um, and so we made the decision to include like all those very young companies. But if you look on all sides of the landscape, there's a bunch of young companies as well. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, and I, I guess to, to maybe clear a question that some people might be asking, do people pay to get on this list? Uh, no, but that's a great idea. Maybe I should do that. Like, I, I can, I can, <laughs> Tell you raise your new fund. I'm I can sorry. I can add my my Venmo uh, like somewhere. <laughs> well, I can have it. I can have it on uh, Patreon and like get for, uh, for tips. Uh, get, get tips. Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you heard it here first. Uh, I'm just kidding. So that's awesome. It's, yeah. It's, I, there, there's so much to keep up here, and 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 like, I think. What, what's it like walking uh, looking through this um, each year and sort of seeing the. Uh, transitions of different logos and in, in different areas of the landscape. Yeah, look, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, like in that general spirit of like the, the purpose is the work, that, that's exactly how you, you know, like how we think about it. Like we just look at um, some of the categories and um, so, you know, take uh, data quality and data observability, for example. Uh, so, you know, in prior years, uh, there was, uh, we had data quality and data observability separate, uh, depending on the positioning of different vendors. Yeah, so a little bit more to the, left uh, all the way to the if you scroll to the right here yeah right right here like the, the bottom yeah this this uh, this category and so we used to have like two separate categories and uh, you know if you recall there was like a, a whole uh, sub segment uh, in the market around data lineage and then there was like data quality and data quality is like different folks going at it like in different ways like the great expectations of the world which is more like declarative um the anomalous of the world going at it from more like a machine learning standpoint and then you had the monte carlos of the world um which were more about um just like uh, doing sort of like all the different things and uh you know so like we go back to the category and we'll look around and we see like how those companies evolved and we you know a lot of those are friend of ours that we have conversations with in the context of data driven nyc or otherwise and uh, what turns out is that, like, that that whole category is sort of merging and now like everybody's sort of saying they do all the things uh, and uh, to reflect that, we just merged um, the two boxes into into one. So that's you know one way we we um, uh, we we think about it. And so sort of the same thing. We had um, if you look at uh, data governance uh, and data catalogs last year, those were like two separate categories. And uh, you know those data governance were more the sort of enterprise like Colibras of the world. Uh, and then data catalog was like this whole crop of like emerging data catalogs from, uh, you know, whether uh, Stemo, Metaphor, um, or, um, you know, Castor, or um, Selectstar, you know, like this whole group. And then if you talk to all the folks and look at uh, how the position now, like everything's sort of merging as well. So we grouped mm -hmm. everything, data governance and catalogs, um, because ultimately we think uh, all those companies are going more or less in the same direction, even though, you know, if you if you have the discussion with every single one of them, they'll tell you, no, I'm, I'm doing this or this, but like directionally all going in the, in the same direction. So there's right. a couple of examples of like how we think of the kind of work we do to understand the industry. There's, there was a, a, a category and that's maybe um, a bit more controversial, but like last year we added the, this category uh, called metric store. So that was mm. like, you know, that was a whole discussion uh, at the at the at the time around okay you know the semantic layer um, and this year like I, I see you Joe uh, trying to find the category or the <laughs> point is like we no longer have it yeah yeah uh, okay and 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 and, and look fundamentally the, the the need for a metric store is uh, as important as ever uh, so that 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 concept as a as a category has not disappeared. Uh, but we've seen different vendors, uh, the vendors that we had put in the category evolve in different directions. So uh, I'm an investor in a company called Trace uh, that um, uh, was uh, you know, very much a metric store, uh, but they realized that the, what well, they realized 
sort of always part of the idea, but like they, they faster than than they thought, they realized that okay, it was great to have that semantic layer um, thing, uh, but uh, it was uh, even more important to build applications on top of this. So so Trace has, has, has gone in that direction. There's a company called Supergrain that pivoted pretty uh, substantially. Uh, and then uh, there was Transform, and then uh, Transform, as we know, so DBT announced their own metric store and, as a product, and then they went on like just recently to buy Transform. So if you look at the different vendors, uh, you could argue that Omni could be falling into that category of uh, mm. metric store, uh, but then we're not going to have a category for just like one one company. So you know, like another example of us tracking the market and and see how that evolves. And uh, again, you can have a, a very important piece of functionality because again, metric store is, is a really important concept, but like not enough to warrant a separate category just because you don't have enough pure play vendors that are that that play in that uh, category. Well, let me ask a, a question related to this idea of maybe that category disappearing and also the fact that some of these categories are very crowded. Um, Steve Jobs famously said, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said Dropbox is more of a feature than a product. Now, ultimately, we know Dropbox actually survived and did pretty well. But do you think some of, do you think we're heading towards some acquisitions where maybe some of these companies become features of other products or something along those lines? Yeah, for, so, so, you know, for, for, for sure. And look, that's that's the... That's a part of the conversation, uh, you know, uh, ultimately all of this is, uh, you know, it's like a, a labor of love and a celebration yeah. of the community. And again, I have a lot of friends uh, and uh, like, I, I don't want to be the, you know, the bearer of bad news and like all, all the things. So, like I'm saying this like from a place of, um, of just like uh, love and support for the um, ecosystem, which, uh, you know, has been such a wonderful place for me to sort of grow up uh, mm -hmm. professionally, if you want. And uh, but like that's, that's just like the, the the reality. And look, there's there's a there's a broad situation in sort of startup land um, around uh, you know so many companies being overvalued and uh, way over their skis in terms of like still cost structure in a world where like overnight uh, seemingly VC money has uh, become has gone from abundant and cheap to scarce and expensive so there's like this whole you know situation in in, in the world but like certainly in the world of, of of data infrastructure and arguably you um you know some parts of the ai ecosystem uh you know there the, 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 there is a absolutely a situation where you have like a bunch of those companies that um uh, you know, we're in a hot categories like two or three years ago and we're able to like raise money very quickly and sometimes again and sometimes again, uh, way ahead of where they are as, as a business. Uh, and um, you end up with like a sea of uh, companies that um, have raised tons of money, uh, don't have a lot of revenue yet. And look, part of it is uh, it takes time to build a business. Um, and uh, there's like nothing wrong with not having uh, a lot of revenue yet, a lot of customers when you have been around for two or three years. It's like it, it takes that, that, that much time to, to build a product and, and, and get somewhere. Regardless, so these companies are sort of getting caught in that weird uh, and difficult situation where, um, you know, VC money has dried up. Uh, customers uh, are uh, all of a second a lot of a lot more. Um, uh, you know, they have their own problems. They have like their CFOs uh, breathing down their neck and they're looking over their shoulders, and they have tighter budgets, and they're going to be a lot less experimental because uh, you know we're entering that phase of the market where like nobody gets fired for buying IBM type type thing. Where you know if you're a head of data engineering now, like you, you you're not going to say well. Let me try and work with this company that is, you know, that just graduated from YC six weeks ago, just because I think they're very smart. Uh, you know, hopefully there's still going to be some of that because that's the engine of creativity in the startup world. Like that, that kind of like, you know, customers making those um, those decisions to uh, work with early stage companies. But the reality is that it's going to be a lot harder. So. You know, this very uncomfortable uh, intersection between uh, companies that um, haven't had enough time on earth to really grow into, uh, um, you know, actual businesses, overvalued, um, raised too much money at a too high valuation uh, in a context where there's not going to be a lot of VC money to come rescue them at, the, at those valuations. Uh, and then customers that are going to be much less willing to experiment and buy. Uh, so that's not going to end up working out uh, for everyone. So we were talking about data quality and data observability, not to pick on that category, because I think it's it's a very important and, and a very clear opportunity, which, by the way, is why you have uh, so many companies in, in that category. Like, everybody wants to be the data dog of data. 
Mm. but like you know the, the market is not going to be able to sustain uh, you know 20 different vendors right like something's right. going to have to give so hopefully you end up with like one or two that end up doing well but like everybody <laughs> everybody else is going to need uh, to you know uh, maybe raise money in a down round uh, if sort of they're lucky uh, or find a home or you know sadly but clearly there'll be a bunch of companies that will just not make it yeah it's interesting too because I, I remember um you know uh, we were we did a podcast together uh, matt turk and i uh last year actually around this time maybe a bit earlier but and it was interesting because i think the conversation we had sort of delved into what might happen if the mm -hmm. uh if a downturn starts and i suppose here we are um and i think the threads at the time you know we, we went through a few high, um, scenarios where um you know, maybe keep investing in new companies, uh, double down on the ones you got. Um, what, what, are, what are you seeing right now? What, what's the strategy of VCs uh, in general? Yeah, look, I, I think we are in this uh, sort of weird situation where uh, the market is frozen because um, there hasn't been enough of a convergence between what in financial term I would name the bid and the ask. Uh, so you certainly have companies that, uh, if they could, would want to raise money. And you certainly have VCs that um, have raised a bunch of money and uh, actually do want to deploy. But nobody wants to do uh, a, a deal at uh, the you know, 2021 prices. Right. And yeah. we haven't gotten to that moment of, of reckoning. Uh, where you're going to have enough companies that are actually running out of cash and have no choice but going back to the market uh, and do whatever deal they can. Um, and until that moment of reckoning happens, which I think we're kind of like six months away from, from happening, mm -hmm. the, the market is not going to start um, you know, uh, sort of gelling again. You're not going to have like enough of a, of a of an overlap of the bid and, and the ask. So it, it it you know it sounds like ruthlessly capitalistic, uh, but that's kind of the reality of it. Yeah, well, it's funny. I mean, a lot of my friends who are founders raised kind of right before things fell off the cliff, and so one common strategy I'm seeing with them is they're like, all right, we're going to belt tighten. I'm not going to hire a lot right now. We may even cut some jobs, but we're going to try to keep floating this for a couple of years until hopefully we can get out of this cycle. But of course, not every startup is in that position. Not everyone timed the market quite that way. Yeah. Look, I, you know, it's um, by definition very hard to uh, predict the, the, the future. Yeah. But there's like yeah. this uh, uh, blog post from uh, Elad Gill the other day, uh, like earlier this week, um, that uh, I thought like nailed it in, in some. Uh, interesting ways and I look at, uh, forget the the exact uh, numbers he was using in his example but um, it was basically saying hey you know if you've raised uh, I think that was like 50x AR and you grow at 20% uh, it's going to take you nine years uh, to grow into that valuation um, so I think I think I think people I, I, there's still a little bit of a denial people are like okay well that was you know, we're like this sort whole of like craziness. Maybe that was a little crazy, but now we're sort of at the bottom of the market and it's going to go back up to maybe not like all the way, but like something that kind of looks like that. And um, look, like in some ways, I, I'd love to. Like I'm, I'm, I'm with everyone, right? Like I'm, I have a, you know, something that people don't always understand about VCs is that like, okay, yes, we can do deals, new deals now, but like I have a whole portfolio of companies, right? Like the conversations we're having now, like I'm, I'm yeah. having the conversation on the boards I'm on like all the time. Sure. Um, so uh, I think I think there's still a little bit of a um, of of, of um, uh, sort of mental adjustment to this new reality that hasn't quite happened yet because it sucks, right? It's just not yeah. fun. Yeah. And uh, and I, I thought that example by by Al Gill was 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 uh, was interesting. Like if you just to put in your mind that um, if you grow, you know, twenty percent, which is pretty slow, but like you know, even even forty percent is going to take multiple years to get to just that number right so let alone doing 2x or 3x so that uh you know that that's uh if you if you get into that mental model that mindset uh it becomes uh you know you can start strategizing uh, more but uh again sure. that adjustment hasn't happened universally uh, do you want to take some audience questions real quick that some, yeah. uh, have popped in here um some uh Nilesh, uh, actually um his name says LinkedIn user here, but I can I can tell you it's Neil Ash. Uh, he was actually on our podcast <laughs> just, uh, earlier this week. He asks, uh, has a VC mindset shifted to focus more on profitability versus pure growth? If not, should it? 
Yeah, look, uh, so, you know, ultimately VCs are in the business of, bike, of, uh, of uh, backing uh, hypergrowth companies. Uh, so, you know, growth uh, will continue to be really important. And, um, you know, something you'll hear a lot uh, from, from, from people is that you want to um, remain default investable. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the one thing that makes a startup not default investable is, um, uh, you know, primarily just lack of growth. So if as a startup, you grow, you know, 10% a year, you know, as a Series A startup, that's just not going to um, be exciting enough for uh, the next round of, of, of VC. So growth continues to matter. Uh, but but certainly, you know, profitability uh, is, is, is arguably less profitability and, and, and more uh, general efficiency of the business. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, look, like VCs, um, again, like something that people don't always understand about, about venture uh, capital is like VCs in, 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 in many ways don't really make the market as much as follow the market. Yeah. And the, the, the market, um, you know, the very broad market, like, you know, VC is like a little trickle. It's a very exciting trickle. But it's a little trickle in the overall macro. And the overall macro market has already decided that, um, you know, what's important now is, uh, prof- is it's, it's uh, healthy growth, reasonable growth, profitable growth, sustainable growth, like different terms for it. And, and VC is just adapting to that and, and basically it's sort of transmitting that message that we hear from public markets into the private markets that the, 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 the big pool, uh, you know, is not going to reward the small pool uh, anymore for like just like crazy growth at uh, crazy prices. And now so it needs to be something that's much more like sustainable and, and balanced. So profitable, profitability would be great, uh, but um, and, and by the way, profitability, like in, in what I, I, I described, uh, you know, like a consolidation, potential extinction of like a bunch of companies. Like obviously, if you're um, in a company that has, um, you know, where, where you don't think you can have like uh, tremendous growth and you don't have tremendous uh, product market fit, and you're starting to see, uh, you know, a horizon like any months ago, any months away, we're going to run out of cash. Like by all means, if you can get profitable, then like you know then you can come in your own destiny and it's a, it's, a, it's a good place to be. Right. Interesting. Kind of a, kind of a related question here uh, from um, Elseda Haksa. She asks, um, we're seeing a lot of investors putting in convertible notes and uh, your investing experience. What uh, analysis inflection point do you look for to put in that bridge uh, around the financing versus positioning the company for an exit? Um, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a multiple uh, question within the Question. So, yeah. um, so convertible note is 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 just an instrument, uh, and like you know, safe as a convertible note of some sort. Um, and but then I assume what this refers to is a convertible note, um, uh, basically meaning a meaning a bridge. Um, so yeah, look, we we are going to be in this world of bridges. Uh, so um, you know, a year or two ago, uh, most of the conversations at the board level was just like, oh, we got unsolicited term sheets for our next round, and and you'd be like, well, I just did my prior round, but like, oh, well, you know, we published it on TechCrunch, and then we got like twenty more VCs that wanted to put more money, and we're like, well, we haven't made much progress. And we're like, well, they don't care. So. Um, so that was that was the world. So like you, you didn't talk about bridges or because capital kept coming. So now we're like at the other end of the spectrum where capital is not coming. Uh, so if you're an unprofitable company, uh, you know you're going to need to uh, either get a next round done or uh, more likely an internal round. Uh, so yeah, we're starting to talk about bridges. Uh, we're starting to talk about uh, you know rounds with uh, structure, which means like also like. Um, uh, you know, different ways for investors to be protected uh, yep. against uh, like downside and, and, and that type of thing. Um, but uh, I think the, the, the question is, is well asked in that um, if you are sensing that you are getting into a difficult situation, ideally, you know, 12 to 18 months away as opposed to three months away. Uh, because three months away would be kind of like too late. Um, you, you you do probably want to have like that dual track where uh, you want to get some sense for uh, internal investor appetite to support the company, and then starting to have uh, those company those uh, conversations around the potential exit. An exit uh, is typically something that you want to prepare like a year ahead of time. Mm. And the best the best exits uh, time and again. 
uh, are with people that you know, uh, companies that you know, companies with, with uh, which you have had a relationship, partners. Uh, the one thing that you want to avoid is like, uh, you know, sort of seven months uh, before running out of cash, like, oh, shit, we're not going to make it. And then you go back to your board and then it takes like a month for like people to like sort of scramble around and make the decision. And then next thing you know, you sort of like five months away from doing cash and then you try to find a banker and then nobody wants to do your deal because you're too small. And then like you're three months of, uh, you know, uh, from being out of cash. And then you just like try to find anyone, like people that you've never spoken to in your life. And then that's how you end up with like a super underwhelming aqua hire. So there's certainly a, a, a uh, you know, you, you need to do a lot of like advanced thinking um, and like a chess player. Uh, be thinking about like the different options like a year and a half out as yeah. opposed to six months out. I know the last time we spoke uh, for the podcast, you were sort of lamenting that the deal flow was so fast that you really didn't have time to get to know the founders and develop a relationship. Yeah. Um, do you see that changing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, except in generative AI. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Where like, okay, it's like party like 99, it's, it's just uh, well, party like it's 2021, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, that, that's exactly right. Where, where <laughs> you see exactly uh, some of the same nonsense, which is, you mm -hmm. know, like, which is not, um, once you really think about it, not completely irrational behavior. Once no, you put isn't. yourself in the shoes of like the different people involved, that, uh, you know, 100%, like some you know, uh, smart and qualified engineers like tweet something uh, about like uh, some thought they have about like building a product and like this, you know, 25 VCs that like, you know, them uh, directly. So that, that's very much happening in generative AI. And like, you're like, you're like in the world of like uh, billion dollar valuations for companies that are very new and blah, 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 all those things. Um, uh, but like, you know, outside of, of, of that uh, is it, just, uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's 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 a whole different world, and uh, yeah, to your question, uh, the then it's it's in, in in some ways that's one of the benefits is that you actually have time to do the work. Uh, you have time to do you know due diligence, call customers, uh, uh, meet the company several times, meet not just the CEO but the rest of the company, and that is uh, really. Um, you know, uh, th that's the way it should be. And by the way, not just for the investor, but very much for the company, sure. because you want the investor to be truly, to have done the work, to be truly bought in and to really want to be a partner, because especially for the type of investing we do, it's, the, you know, the beginning of a long journey and you're going to be working together for five years, seven years, 10 years, 12 years. And, um, you know, the shotgun sort of marriages uh, that were done in 20, uh, 20, 20 or 21, you know, it's, it's funny if you're a tiger because like the, the tiger model is like, we'll give you money and we, we will not talk to you until you need money again, which is, you know, a different style of investing. But the type of investing we do is just like, no, well, you know, we, 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 we get on boards, we lead investors, like we're gonna spend like a lot of time with you. So you better, you know, we want to know you and like you should absolutely get to know us as well to know if we're like the right person for you and for, Um, got a kind of a related question here from uh, Ethan Aaron. Um, he's in uh, New York. Um, yeah. Yeah. So over the years, um, how have you seen the center of mass for uh, ML AI data companies? New York. New York. No, no, <laughs> from like as, as you can know, like I'm a like I'm a big uh, you know like I'm a big uh, very biased uh, towards uh, towards New York. No, look. Um, You know, I, I don't know that it's necessarily um, super specific to, for data machine learning and AI. Um, it's certainly the, the, the big story of the last few years has been this sort of uh, uh, decentralization of tech, like that's sort of 10 or 15 years in the making. Uh, but it sort of feels like with the pandemic, like it's like it's like truly unlocked now. I mean, certainly in New York, uh, you know, it's like nothing i've seen ever in new york the, the last six to nine months like really uh, feels like um you know new york like officially arriving as a truly truly major tech center uh in, in part because uh it seems like half of san francisco moved to new york in the last right. uh, in the last few months you know a bunch of people like were untethered from san francisco during the pandemic and then uh, people went all over the country, including, you know, in great places like Miami or Austin or like different places. And I think there's like a, a fair amount of those people that were like, okay, that was kind of cool to be in that different place for six months. But now as I think about where I want to be for the next few years, I, I don't want to be initially in that city. 
Um, and then, you know, I went to school in New York where I have like family on the East Coast or whatever uh, in the North, Northeast. And you see a lot of people uh, moving from those different locations in addition to directly from San Francisco to New York. So like that, that's certainly, um, certainly happening. So it's been very exciting, uh, including for a bunch of like data, machine learning and AI, uh, which is like more vibrant in New York than um, I've ever seen. Um, and then there is, um, you know, in, in the decentralization of like, machine learning AI, there's like a shit ton happening in Europe, um, mm. which, um, you know, is close to my uh, heart and uh, where I spend a lot of time as a, as, as a you know, as a, as a French born uh, person. Uh, but like there's tons of stuff happening in France and there's tons of uh, stuff happening everywhere. And then, you know, the UK, right? Like people talk about um, San Francisco and all those things. But if you think about like, you know, DeepMind is a UK company, uh, Stability AI is a UK company, like, like the very, you know, major players. Like when you think about the top three or four companies, uh, you got like two of them are, you know, from the UK. Matt's in New York too, so uh, I, case, I am. Case we, in point, we you're, 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 yeah. yeah. Ne yeah. Next stream, Matt, we'll we'll meet and do a chat or something. We'll fly <laughs> Joe in to New York and convert yeah. him. If he, we're working on it. So slowly but surely, yeah. We should, and speaking of which, too, I mean the community aspect. I mean, I I I, I see you as definitely you know the um you know. I live in Utah, so I'm not in New York, but I see you as sort of the, uh, from the outside in the ringleader of, uh, you know, the, the data scene there and the tech scene, I think to a large extent, you've been doing uh, data-driven NYC for, for how long now? Uh, 11 years. 11, 11 years. years. Yeah. Okay. A long time. Yeah. And then yeah. Ethan, who has just asked the question is also leading, he's got his happy hours and things happening. And so, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in the data space. Yeah. yeah. Here, sure. It's just, uh, just a yes, yeah, like, yeah. 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 Like, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, Depending on how to look at it, like a ringleader or like happy participant or like it's, it's just it's much it's much it's much just like broader. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, when I started uh, Data Driven in 2011, I, I basically started it because I couldn't really find a community for like people mm. like me, and uh, mm. that was like literally building a community for myself. Uh, and uh, that that's what happened. But like since then, uh, you know, the ecosystem has just like grown like leaps and bounds in all sorts of different ways. So you know. That's cool. It's uh, it's it's in some ways mission accomplished. Uh, but yeah, data driven has been quite a quite a thing. Yeah. And like, if if people haven't come across that, you can just go on uh, YouTube, search for data driven NYC, and you have like a whole history of like ten years of, of talks, including some really awesome people from like the you know we've had the uh, CEOs of Databricks, like the yeah. previous one and the current one. We had like MongoDB three times, we had Datadog three times, we had. Um, you know, uh, like all the whole generation of like the, you know, modern data stack folks, uh, uh, Tristan at DBT a couple of times, uh, at Fivetran, like, you know, every, everyone, then plenty of people in AI, you know, Jan LeCon, who's like still to right. the most, the most uh, watched talk um, we've, we've, uh, we've had. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a good uh, resource for anybody that's uh, interested in, in learning. No, I think of anything I've, of any events I've seen, I think yours might have the most stacked roster I've, I've seen. Um, so yeah, and I appreciate it. Heavy hitters. And, 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 and as you guys know, because you, you, you spoke at it and like people can find your, your talk um, on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, you know, like we, 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 uh, we, we back in person. So we'll continue having some online, we'll actually we'll bring back online events uh, that we had uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but we, we back in person, which by the way, uh, was... Uh, a significant effort you know it, it turns out that like being offline you know being a uh, like shut down for two years is not the best thing for an offline community and uh, <clears throat> you know people are, are just starting to like rebuild the habits in, in in new york and elsewhere around you know, joining those events in, in person and we're starting to get people who are like you know where, where attending those events are part of their uh, professional identity where like every month they come that's a place where they learn there's a place where they meet uh, single uh, similarly minded people and um, so we, 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 we now back to, you know, uh, we're going to move to uh, a bigger room. So like currently we're at like 110 and we've had to move to a room in a couple of months, which will have uh, 200 people. Mm, and then, nice. you know, hopefully we can move back to being like 300 or 400. And we're not trying to do something that's like mass, 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 even with thousands of people. Madison Square uh, Garden. But, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, that I'll definitely charge for. Uh, the but, Central Park. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but you know, there's equally there's some power in, in, in numbers. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, over the years, it's been uh, such a wonderful thing where like having more people just like maximizes serendipity. And we've had yeah. so many speakers uh, being right. able to like recruit, uh, you know, people, uh, 
uh, multiple um, uh, you know customers that they met at the event, and then we even had you know companies uh, where where the founders met literally at the event, like hanging out. It's just like a beautiful thing. That's really cool. Yeah, and I heard a rumor that um, your event's now getting a wait listed again. Um, yeah, yeah. So we yes, we we back to so we actually just opened up RSVPs for the next one, which is on March fifteen, and. Um, yeah, we, we back to like the event, uh, you know, selling out. It's free by design, but the event like selling out in like two hours, uh, which, is, uh, which is good, which is, you know, we, we back. Like uh, it, it took a little bit of time, but uh, uh, I mean, a little bit of time, like, you know, five, six months. Uh, but like we, we back to that velocity, which is which is what you want. Like you want a, a vibrant community where, where people value um, uh, the, the opportunity to speak and people value the opportunity to, to attend and uh, and uh, people look forward to it, and it's you know it's not something where, like you, you know may do may not do, and then you decide not to go. It's, it's it's like a you know an important part of your professional identity. Interesting. I mean, let me ask you this too, because I, I think you give back to an extraordinarily uh, huge degree. Did did the meetups coincide with the idea for the uh, Mad Data Landscape back in 2012? So it seemed like you came I mean, out like sort of around that that it's sort of around that same time. Yeah. Look at my my entire uh, it's, it's sort of like my my deal right like all my dna or whatever it's 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 those um like i was like, like i was saying for the mad is it's like open sourcing stuff it's like a community driven approach to venture capital if you want and 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 the, the whole ethos of all the things is um is to have conversations like open up um and uh, creating a group of people that uh, care about those topics and uh, i've just found that um look i could do like this whole work and just like keep it very close to the vest and um, think of it as my advantage over, you know, uh, the, the handful of very qualified VCs out there that are sort of looking for the same companies. But I, one, it's my personality. And, and two, I find it that like from a purely uh, sort of like clinical um, and, uh, and, and, and capitalistic uh, approach, I, I just get so much more than I would, uh, you know, it's like open source versus proprietary. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, my fellow VCs would find those companies anyway. And uh, I just, I just um, uh, find it amazing from a learning and insight and, and, and deal flow perspective to just be open out there and just yeah. talk to a lot of folks. Well, I think isn't Sarah Catanzaro, she's at Amplify. She's speaking at your, uh, your event, right? Yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Case, case in point, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's really cool, actually. So I, I think, like you say, I think a lot of people are very secretive about the, what they do and kind of go hide out in the back cave and, um, you know, uh, but but what you're doing works. I mean, it, it's it's cool. I've been, a, you know, I saw that Mad Landscape. I remember when the first one came out, actually, uh, and I was like, oh, that's a lot of logos uh, back then. Yeah, um, and, a lot uh, of Hadoop back then, right? <laughs> like, a lot of Hadoop. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And we, How about we kill, yeah, and we yeah. killed Hadoop this time, right? Like, uh, yeah, 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 we were going to ask you about that, that actually. <laughs> Tell us more yeah. about the process of killing Hadoop. I mean, it must have felt like the end of an era, really, the end yeah, of that, an era, because that's that was that, the thing when you started. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's exactly uh, that's exactly right. And um, uh, you know, like we had considered doing that uh, last time around, like at the end of 2021, but kept it because of the footprint. And look, I mean, Hadoop like still has a lot of footprints, and I'm talking about Hadoop, the like the, the broad ecosystem, right? Like yeah. Hive and like all of the things. Yeah. And there's still like, a bunch of companies, and that's supported through the the cloud vendors. Uh, but just as a sort of like net new category, it's just uh, you know it's served its purpose, uh, and uh, it's been replaced largely by the modern data stack as as we know. So it just like felt a little odd in something where you have like you know generative AI and like all the new stuff to have like on the left side. Uh, Hadoop, uh, but yeah, it does, it does feel like a, a little bit of the uh, end of an era, and uh, yeah, it's, an, it's like it, it's an interesting time, you know. This whole like big data, like you could argue that um, as a bit of a segue, uh, as as you, uh, uh, one of the evolution that we start seeing is like in this world of like cost control and cost cutting, uh, you're starting to see people sort of like question the whole. Um, magnitude of the investments that they do in particular that that very central concept that that is very much big data at its core um in terms of like overall philosophy which is that hey uh, you should just like store all the data mm. like uh, regardless of uh you know whether you think you can do something with it just like just like put it there and then uh you can figure out what to do uh with it later right which has really been like since like 2007 uh has been has been the idea 
Uh, and that was Hadoop, but that's very much now, you know, Snowflake, all the cloud, cloud data warehouses with, uh, or data lakes, which are or lake houses, which are infinitely elastic and like, you know, cheaper and like all those things. But, like people are starting to say, well, you know, um, that's pretty expensive, actually. I mean, it's not expensive on a per unit basis or whatever you, you want, but like actually when you do store everything, considering how much is growing, um, you know, it actually does get pretty expensive. And when you add like all the tools around it, uh, you know, like, is there a different way? Should we be more careful with cost? Like, that's like the whole, like, you know, DuxDB embedded um, yeah. discussion versus central data warehouses. Uh, it's like different approaches. It's, it's a very interesting time um, in, the, in the in that whole era of, 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 of you know, that started with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. It feels like in general, we're at an inflection point as an industry too, from an infrastructure perspective. I think for, we've um, sort of settled on a lot of uh, constellations of, of uh, different categories and tools. Um, but I don't feel like we're by any means close to the final word on uh, yeah. sort of where this goes. I, I feel like the modern data sec era really was um, sort of a waypoint on, on the way to somewhere. I'm not try quite sure where it goes, but I, I don't think this is a, by any means a final say. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's the, that's, that's the, <laughs> uh, you know, the reason why, uh, I gotta, you know, like I've said, the, the, the data industry, the, the gift that keeps on giving is because mm -hmm. um, there seems to be like a new way of going about the same old problems uh, right. you know, again and again. It's like always like a new thing. But look, I mean, th there is a, um, to the point about consolidation, like, I, look, I, I don't think that's going to happen quite like that. But there is a version of the world where uh you end up with like two or three platforms that that do all the things like if you think of databricks right now uh databricks does all the things right it's like mm -hmm. the the lake the lake house it has some bi or some bi compatibility it's coming from the background or like data science machine learning so like it does yep. that part like you know look does it is it the best uh enterprise machine learning platform out there you know arguably not but like it's uh, very strong uh, and, um, you know, they have a data governance, they have a data catalog. So there's sort of like all the different, different boxes. If you think of Snowflake, like Snowflake is uh, competing very directly with um, Databricks. So they probably going to need to do some of the same thing because like they, you know, if, if Databricks is a data and AI company, Snowflake do doesn't want to be just a data company. So they're going to have to be the AI company. So what does that mean? Um, and then the cloud vendors, as we know, like that's the whole business is to have like this suite of products that like covers everything and like year by year, bit by bit, that like truly do cover everything. So could there be a future where, um, you know, you don't need a modern data stack because that's it. You just like, you know, have a, a data break sign in and you're done. Uh, and, you know, at uh, the other end of the spectrum, like all this, like uh, much, much, much smaller companies around like fully managed, um, uh, companies like some of which are are just abstraction on top of the modern data stack, yeah. uh, but others are actually have built the whole thing. So like a you know a uh, perhaps more simplified version of the of the whole thing, but something that works out of the box. So that that could be an end state where where, where you don't need to have a, a stack. And look, may, maybe the very top companies need a need a stack because they have a team of uh, you know two hundred data engineers who can like stitch things together. Yeah. But for like the ninety nine percent, like maybe maybe not. Um, so that that could be an endpoint. Uh, you know, historically, uh, that those things tend to not happen. You don't end up with like a company uh, like a stable equilibrium where you have one company that does all the things. Like the standard then, oil you know, of data. Yeah. It, it, exactly. So it's like as we all know, like tech goes through phases of like uh, bundling, unbundling. So uh, you know, we we clearly in a phase of an unbundled state where you have like a tons of different vendors that you need to put together to have like a solution. It seems to me that through consolidation or through the data bricks of the world, adding much more functionality, uh, we getting into something that's going to feel a little more like a bundled state of the world. And then inevitably there'll be an unbundling, but you know, maybe that's a few years away. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Well, awesome. maybe I this is a financial. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, maybe this yeah. is kind of financial question, you know, an era of uh, acquisitions would lead to more unified data stacks. Basically. Anyway, go ahead, Joseph. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting. Now, turn, turn that, turn that, uh, you know, uh, finance uh, matters, like money yeah. matters, like all yeah. this is uh, <laughs> or businesses that are, yes, like we all build cool products and think about functionality and solving customer problems and all the things, but like ultimately all of this is very, um, you know, the the 
the like I, I joke that um, you know in the last few years uh, venture capital felt much more like venture uh, you know adventure discovery mm. other thing and now it's starting to feel a little more like capital mm. uh, and I think that's true of the you know for all startups like we're getting in that phase which is uh, you know depending on what your DNA is uh, more or less fun I think for a lot of people much less fun but like we we we're getting caught. Uh, caught up like the market the reality economic reality of the market is catching up with like a bunch of uh, of us and you know what does that mean how do you think about it and uh, it's a, it's it certainly is a, a different world it certainly is well cool i know we're at time um but matt turk uh, great having you on um lots of awesome um uh, i guess threads and conversations and uh, thanks to the audience for the questions and the comments uh data driven nyc is when again uh march 15th Okay. So you can uh, you can find us on on Eventbrite these days. Like if anybody's in town, um, you know, either lives here in, in New York or like swings by. Um, we're still on Meetup, but like we've also been trying to position a way to Eventbrite, so you can register through both. Uh, but Eventbrite is probably the easiest, and then the event after that will be on uh, April sixteen, I believe, and then the next one May sixteen. Uh, otherwise, you can just go on YouTube. Uh, and um, find all the talks there. That's where, like, the moment when I turn into a uh, YouTube influencer and I t- mm. say, like, smash the subscribe button, because <laughs> uh, uh, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna get the talks as they uh, as uh, as they appear, uh, or or uh, subscribe to my blog at mattturk.com, m a t t t u r c k three t's. Okay, or follow his memes on uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. So, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, somebody called you the uh, the VC meme lord uh, earlier in the uh, thread here. So uh, that's a high compliment. <laughs> no, I mean, it. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, 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 like Twitter has been uh, has been uh, a lot of fun. Like, I, I really transitioned from being a very uh, serious, um, you know, like tweeting about some very serious stuff that uh, I don't think was very interesting to many people. To, to just like tweeting all the random thought that goes through my head all day and just like forever. Um, and that's, that's really the pandemic that like sort of changed that where like, I think we were all super bored uh, in our rooms, like waiting for the thing to be over. And I was like, oh, well, as it turns out, like all the random stuff that goes through my mind, if I tweet that, actually more people seem to be like reacting to it and so like all right, all right i'll do but it's I'll really smart that. commentary though too it's, it's not insane. like just, oh thank it's you not, it's not like, oh of course yes <laughs> i mean it, but it's not like complete dumbass commentary right i mean it, there, there's there's like a um there's there's a thread to a, a very good point uh mass behind something that's like utterly hilarious to be frank so uh which yeah well uh, it works thanks. yes yeah. yes yeah that, that's uh <laughs> I mean that, that's truly, uh, yeah, truly authentic and like for what it's worth, so like literally what goes through my mind at like any point in time, so just like how my <laughs> mind works. So it's, it's been uh, it's been good. Like you know, when I think it's it's you know I'll I'll, I'll stop on Twitter after that, but uh, yeah, you know that's like the good old irony of of of, of Twitter is that um, you know I do my math thing, which again like it's. Um, you know this conversation and, and and all the things so like it's 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 amazing in in so many different ways but like i i, I tweet the the mad thing and i haven't checked but i was like at 300 or whatever likes on the on the on the thing and then i tweet like some random joke like that just goes through my mind in like half a second and like i grab my phone and like i tweet it and the thing goes like five thousand likes you know like like you know 10x 15x 20x and the, the, that's that's like hundreds of hours of work versus like four seconds and uh, I get like, with the four seconds, I get like the 10x. Uh, it, it, of course, it's not about like the number of likes and that type of thing, but, uh, but it's so. But it really fun. is. I mean, but I mean, it's, it is. it's what matters so. in life. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you on TikTok this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, here's the. Uh, Here's the mad uh, 20 and 10 things you need to know about the mad. Right. You'd be pointing in 1400 different directions. <laughs> yes, exactly. There, so. There's a little yeah. bubble. So. <laughs> so awesome. Well, cool. Um, well, we'll, uh, we'll see you whenever we see you. I think Matt uh, Housley will see you at the uh, Data Driven NYC. So, see you um, in a couple of weeks. Well, yeah. 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 Again, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for the time, man. It was a great yeah, chat. Really, yeah, really appreciate it. And uh, always fun to see you guys. Uh, congrats yeah. on all the good work. And by the way, we didn't mention this, but like Turnery is on the mad. We are, uh, yeah. yeah. On the, we created the, we 
uh, not created, but radically expanded this like AI uh, and data consulting uh, box at the bottom right corner uh, to reflect the reality that precisely there's a bunch of um, companies that are getting uh, scale and brand recognition, including very much you guys, uh, that uh, you know are recognized for their expertise, and that's a super important part of the ecosystem, especially given the complexity and, and all the things. So that that was. Um, uh, you know, a very deliberate thing to add to, to beef up that category and uh, obviously wanted to have you guys on there for sure. Cool, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the recognition. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah we're really stoked to see that. I was looking through it and I was like, oh, that's us. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Your tip is coming, Matt. We're, we're sending it right over. Yeah, yes, just yes, uh, yes. send Venmo <laughs> afterwards. So, yeah. Yes, I mean, Zelle works as well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, well, Matt Turk, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, man. Have a good All right, day. Thanks, guys. All right, take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.